Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I appreciate you all taking the time to join us today for our second episode in propeller balancing. Uh, again, I'm Scott Jefferson, again, Regional Solutions Specialist with uh, ASA Systems. Uh, here today with Josh Shively, our Product Support Specialist on the uh, fixed wing. Uh, also today, uh, covering the chat, is going to be Todd Underwood. He's our Product Support Specialist uh, on the uh, rotor wing. Uh, again, uh, on Tuesday, uh, again, we were here, y'all were here for, we went over the, uh, how to do a basic setup in the Cobra 2 Model 2021 Analyzer. Uh, today, we're going to be starting with the, uh, talking about the starting the balancing job, uh, how to complete the job. Also, if we run over a little bit today, uh, again, some of the uh, uh, material may be uh, covered on the next session, which will be on May 26, Managing Data. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Josh, who will be doing some demonstration for you today. Good afternoon. Just going to run over just uh, our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to spend a, just a moment uh, reviewing the Cobra II, uh, the introduction that we talked about on Tuesday. Uh, for anybody that wasn't here on the Tuesday webinar or hasn't seen that yet, we'll go back over uh, the Cobra II introduction. Uh, then we'll move into doing uh, starting a job. Uh, doing a typical balance job from start to finish using our mechanical simulator. And then, uh, time permitting, uh, we'll talk about the weight calculator, do an overview of the weight calculator, and then what uh, completing a job does to the setup. Again, if we run out of time today, we'll cover that on uh, the managing data section. So the Cobra II, or you may hear us uh, call it by its model number, the 2021, uh, is a direct replacement of the model 2020 Pro Balancer. Uh, the 2020 was designed and released uh, over 20 years ago and was a fantastic unit uh, for its time. Uh, really solidified our stance uh, in the propeller balance market, uh, building on the success of uh, its predecessor, the model 1000. Uh, and actually still today, the 2020 kit is, is one of our strongest sellers. Uh, but like anything else, current technology is, is required an upgrade. And that's what we did. We took all the best of the 2020 uh, and feedback from our customers and developed the Cobra 2. So everything the Cobra 2, or the 2020 was capable of doing, the Cobra 2 can do it faster and more efficient. So one of the biggest things you'll notice um, as far as an improvement or a change is the actual screen size. Uh, the last version of the 2020, the 2020 HR, had about a two uh, by three inch LCD screen that had a uh, terrible little green screen uh, that you couldn't see. Uh, so now with the Cobra 2, you've got a seven inch full color display. Uh, and you didn't really have to sacrifice a whole lot of uh, change in the actual product either because you get about, uh, from the 2020 to the Cobra 2, we added about three inches to the width of the unit uh, and the weight went up by one pound. Uh, so you're not really sacrificing anything on the size uh, of the unit. You're just getting a bigger, larger screen. Uh, another one of the areas of improvement that we did uh, from customer feedback was the battery, uh, the battery level. You'd start a job on a 20, with a 2020, and if you weren't paying attention at the very beginning uh, when you powered the analyzer on, you'd completely miss uh, what your current battery level uh, was. So you'd get out in the middle of the job and potentially have the, uh, the analyzer shut off when you do to a dead battery. So when we came out with the Cobra 2, we wanted to make sure that we gave our, our users uh, the ability to see the, the current state of the battery uh, at virtually any time. Uh, speaking of the battery, when the Cobra, uh, the Viper, uh, sorry, the 2020 first was released, it was released with a lead acid battery. Uh, the second generation of it was a nickel, uh, nickel metal hydride. And as anyone knows, using those batteries, they don't last very long. And if you don't do proper battery maintenance to it, that's just going to sacrifice the, the um, longevity of that battery anyway. With the Cobra 2, you're getting a lithium-ion battery. And it's actually the same battery we use in our flagship model, the Viper 2. Uh, so you get that benefit of having a, a, a more current, modern battery uh, in the Cobra 2 with a smart charging system. So from uh, completely dead to full charge, you're looking at about three hours. And there's really, uh, you can plug it in at any state or any battery level uh, and leave it on the charger indefinitely because of that smart charging system. Um, most of your accessories, if you're a current 2020 uh, user uh, for your prop kit, most of your accessories that came in that kit will be compatible with the Cobra 2, uh, saving you a little bit of money if those cables and sensors are still in a serviceable condition. Uh, so if you've got uh, existing uh, vibration sensors, 
and vibe cables and tack sources and tack cables if they're still in serviceable condition uh, then you'll just be looking at doing the upgrade uh, by swapping out the box uh, the analyzer uh, for analyzer uh, but if you have any specific questions or uh, component compatibility questions just give scott or me a call and we can we can help you uh, in your specific case uh, so again just kind of covering the capability of the cobra 2 versus the 2020 so anything the cobra the 2020 was capable of doing uh, such as dynamic propeller balancing, main rotor track and balancing, tail rotor balancing, and vibe uh, spectrum surveys, you're going to be able to do that with the Cobra II uh, faster and more efficient than the, than the 2020. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, just give us a call. So starting right in, uh, looking at what we did uh, last week, uh, sorry, I keep wanting to say last week, it was uh, Tuesday, the last time. This is the propeller balance setup that we built, as you can see on your screen now. Uh, it's kind of a refresher for anyone that, that maybe didn't see it before. Uh, this is kind of the setup parameters that we need to have established to be able to go out and do this, uh, uh, this balanced job. And what it basically covers is just the, the, the component installation. So where we've got our vibe sensor uh, installed, where we've got our tax uh, source installed, uh, what our balance RPM and all that is. So if you would, uh, Jared, let's switch over to the the simulator. So we've got, uh, hopefully on the wide angle shot here, we've got the simulator showing. Uh, we've got our balance ring here. Uh, again, this is just a little mechanical simulator with a plexiglass wheel uh, with some uh, pre-drilled holes on it. We've got our analyzer set off uh, over here to the side. So to start a job in a propeller, uh, for a propeller balance with the Cobra II, uh, you're going to highlight propeller balance uh, on the main menu and press OK. And since we've already built our setup, uh, on Tuesday, we're going to go right into start job. So we can hit start job, hit OK there. Because we've got a setup already loaded in, we've done the legwork ahead of time, we can quickly just pull those configuration settings back up and hit OK. This screen is one of those screens that uh, customers sometimes bypass because none, this inf none of the information here is required to continue forward. But we highly recommend that at least in this customer name field at the top, uh, that you put something in there uh, or uh, uh, some kind of rec uh, like a part a PO number or a job number or customer name if you're if you're doing this uh, balance for a customer because when you come back later on to review that data or to maybe print the reports off for that job if this is how you're going to identify that job uh, so if it's you can enter a tail number here in the aircraft registration uh, line. Uh, you can also put it up here in the customer uh, uh, line as well. Uh, any of the information that you enter here will show up on the report. So that's a good question. Um, so the customer name, you can put the tail number. You can also put the, the, the end number down here at the aircraft registration line as well. Uh, for those that uh, have, have been using the Cobra II, if as you've done jobs, you can press the F1 key down here under the customer and any previously uh, Enter job or customer names will appear on this list and you'll be able to select. So since we haven't got any jobs uh, that we've done with this analyzer, that comes up as no available selections. Uh, also, as you enter uh, aircraft registration num uh, numbers in, that num uh, AC uh, REG will show up here as well. Okay. Uh, for our purposes today, we're going to call this uh, SIM for the simulator, just something short and sweet and press OK. This next field is your engine information screen. Uh, again, all this is uh, optional information, but we highly recommend that you fill it out because this will show up on the report. Uh, again, you can put in your propeller serial number, your propeller type, that TSO means time since overhaul and time since new. Uh, you can also fill out similar information uh, for the engine uh, as well. Okay. When all that information is filled in, uh, you can press OK and move on to the next screen. Okay. On your Connect Sensors screen, you're going to get some text uh, towards the top that reminds you of how you need to configure or hook up uh, your, your TAC settings and your VIBE sensor, sensors. So once you have your, your uh, photo TAC installed, we recommend uh, about 12 to 18 inches uh, away from the reflective tape or on the pro uh, propeller, about 12 to 18 inches back with about a five degree offset from perpendicular. 
Uh, once you have that installed, you're going to install your vibration sensor. Uh, again, as you set it, uh, set it up in the um, uh, propeller balance setup screen, uh, and route your cables over to the box. Make sure that you don't route those cables along spark plug wires or anything hot uh, or any kind of rotating components. Uh, kind of route those out away from those, uh, those, uh, those items uh, safely back to the analyzer. And as you can see here, it's, it's reminding us to hook our tax uh, source up to channel one and our vibe source up to vibration channel A. If you notice down here on the bottom, you see tac power is on. Uh, what that's doing is that it sends uh, power to your photo tachometer so that you can uh, make sure that your reflective tape is lined up. On the back side of the photo tack, there's a little red light. We call that the gate light, G-A-T-E, the little gate light. And as you turn your uh, propeller back and forth in front of that photo tack, and it uh, sees that reflective tape, that light will illuminate. Uh, so that's uh, an easier way for you to, before you get in there and fire up engines and realize that you don't have a tack source or a tack signal, uh, you can verify that your, your photo tack is properly aligned from here. Do not worry if you come in here and you press the F1 and it says tack power off uh, and you, you proceed from this point because the analyzer, when it goes into data acquisition mode, will automatically send power to the photo tack. So the, the status of this screen here where it says tack power is off is really just for alignment of the photo tack prior to the job beginning. Uh, once you engage the analyzer and you're in data ac acquisition mode, the photo tack will automatically be powered for you, okay? So once we've got our connectors uh, connected up, uh, everything is ready to go, I'm going to press OK. It's going to remind you this is kind of a safety check. We want to uh, perform an FO, uh, FOD check and start the engine per the flight manual. And at this point, it's a good time. I'm going to kick the simulator on, get our wheel uh, up and turning. All right, I'm going to press OK. So as you can see on the screen now, we've got our desired RPM based on our setup was 1,728 RPM. What we're currently reading now is about 1,728 with a difference here. Uh, on the, the first run, uh, and I, I misspoke on the last video, so I'll correct that here. On the first run, you have about a 200 RPM uh, filter. You want to try to get within 200 RPM of that desired uh, RPM to begin your balance job. Right here below, you also have your current vibe reading. This is a real-time reading. Once you get your, desire, your current RPM uh, to match up with your desired RPM as close as you can, uh, go ahead and press OK, and we're going to move right into the data acquisition phase. So this is that thermometer scale that we were talking about uh, on Tuesday with the uh, FSR reading. So that FSR, that full scale reading, this is zero and this is one IPS. So as you can see here, on the, as this thermometer is filled up here, this gray bar is a representation of your average vibe reading. Okay, so this is a, a, a graphical representation of what's showing up here. Uh, this, you can press the F2 polar key and then I'll pull up a, 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 a similar real-time polar chart that gives you the information here is your, your current vibe reading as shown up on the polar chart. Or you can switch back to the thermometer view. All right. If at any time during this process uh, you're starting to get some, some data that you don't agree with or you, uh, you, you, you think may be suspect, you always have the option to dump what you've currently taken, press this F1 key to reset, and it begins the process over again, okay? Averages out uh, for error, for anything it might see that it doesn't like, uh, and then once you get your green banner at the top completed, press OK. You press OK, brings you to the review job screen. If you notice, I've still got my uh, simulator running at this screen because I also have another opportunity that if the, the data is suspect or if there's something going on that I'm not comfortable with, I have the option to retake again. So I can dump all of that data again and retake the data uh, from scratch again. So along the top here, we've got run number one. We've got our RPM. This is the RPM, uh, the average RPM that we were taking data at and our average uh, magnitude. Right. 
lead angle off the direction of rotation. Essentially, and I don't know if I can get a, uh, you get me on this camera here? Make sure I don't pull anything off. So if that's my propeller blade, can you gotcha. see me there? Okay. If that's my propeller blade and this is my photo tack, what I'm basically wanting to do is make sure that I'm not exactly perpendicular to the back of that blade. I want just, whoops, sorry. Uh, all right. I don't want to be exactly perpendicular to the back of the blade. I want about a five degree offset one way or the other. Okay. Typically, the, the actual curvature of the blade will be enough to give you that, that offset, but you just want to make sure that one, you're about 12 to 18 inches back from the, uh, the reflective tape on the blade with about a five degree offset um, up or down on the photo tag. Is that good? If not, uh, Carrie, give us a call and I'll, uh, or uh, uh, an email and I can send you some photos that'll help uh, clarify that or make that a little clearer. Okay. All right, good questions. Uh, from this screen also, I can pull up a polar view as well. This gives me my run one, my magnitude, and my phase angle, and you can actually see a graphical representation here. And as we complete runs, uh, you'll just see run two will show up, and you'll have your move line from where you originated to to what the current reading is. All right. Uh, you can have the F4 key to review to go back uh, to the review uh, run screen. From this point, I'm going to press OK because I'm happy with what I've got. Warning shot here to say to, to shut down the engines for the manual instructions. You, it requires you to change up from pressing OK to the F5 key. Uh, that's mainly just so you don't get into the, into the uh, a complacent habit of pressing the OK all the way through. Uh, it kind of forces you to move into something else. So I'm going to shut down our simulator. All right, engines have stopped. I'm going to press uh, F5. So now, for our uh, upgrade customers to the Cobra 2, uh, this is new for Software Pack 7. It just got released yesterday uh, on our website. This is a new feature. Because I have selected yes in my setup, for pre-drilled holes, I now have the ability to tell the analyzer if I had some uh, weights already installed prior to starting run one. This is only if you have, like on the King Airs, if you've got pre-drilled holes on the spinner bulkhead or like on a, a, a Lycoming with a starter ring gear, you've got uh, pre-drilled holes there. At this point, if I'm going to say yes here, it'll bring up a screen similar to this. You have to tell the analyzer what's there. So that may require you to remove the weight anyway to take a measurement of it, uh, but you tell it what the, uh, the weight is for each hole. So you remove the weight in each hole, weigh it, and tell the analyzer how many grams it is and what hole it's in. Okay. Once you fill all that, uh, those, those spaces in, you just press OK, and the analyzer is going to store that in the memory, and, and that'll factor in with the algorithm uh, for the for the averaging for a solution, okay. In our scenario here, I don't have any pre-existing weights installed. I just wanted to uh, introduce this to you uh, as a as a new feature for our propeller balance uh, customers. So if you have any more questions about that, feel free to give us a call, and we'll give you more in detail uh, information about that either via email or phone call. Okay. So I'm going to press the F0 key to back up and tell the analyzer that no, I do not have any pre-existing weights uh, installed. Okay, so now it's going to bring me up to my solutions screen. What it's recommending me to do is put 10.1 grams at zero degrees. And because I have pre-drilled holes on my ring and told the analyzer what the phase angle of those, uh, those holes are, it's telling me now that it wants 5 grams in hole number 1, 2.7 grams in hole number 2, and 2.6 grams in hole number uh, 24. I told you on Tuesday that you're the technician, it's the calculator. You know your aircraft better than, than the analyzer does in some cases. I know that on my simulator, if I was to put that much weight on it, that it would not work right. All right, so my, uh, the, the bearings in it would, would uh, fail uh, on it because it's, it's not a, uh, that well built, uh, I should say. I built it, so you, know, it's, uh, you, know, you get what you pay for. Uh, so what you can do in this case is, I, you know, I don't want to do this, but as long as I tell the analyzer what I did and where, that's fine. So I'm going to say down here, I'm going to install none, but I'm going to install 1.4 grams in hole number one, okay? 
So I'm going to get my balance weight. I'm going to find my uh, hole number one. And if you remember on uh, Tuesday, we talked about uh, this is going to be relative to tape. So I have my reflective tape installed right here on the back side of this disc. Uh, can you see that, Jared? Uh, so it's, it, it's on the back side of the wheel right here. Okay. And I told the analyzer that I have uh, hole number one is at the 0 or 360 spot. And so this is going to be hole number one. And I told the analyzer that I'm going to number my holes in a counterclockwise direction. So this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and so on. Okay. So where my reflective tape is, I've decided that's, I've told the analyzer that's going to be my hole number one, so at my zero degree point. So I'm going to install my uh, weight here at the zero degree point. If you noticed, under the suggested, it still tells me what the analyzer is suggesting and then what I'm actually installing because I've told the analyzer where I'm putting the weight. At this point, remember, it's garbage in, garbage out. If I lie to the analyzer and tell it, uh, uh, or, or don't tell it what I've done, you're going to get uh, bad results back. So I'm telling the analyzer that say, I don't feel comfortable putting this much weight on this particular application right now, so I'm going to do this amount of weight uh, for my test weight. Keep in mind a test weight on run number one, uh, or I'm sorry, run two, is a known amount of weight at a known location to affect a change, right? So we just want to have a measurable change on the system so the analyzer can calculate it and give me a balance solution. Uh, if you had pre-existing weights on here, you would still have to pull those off and put this new solution on and tell it what you've done, okay? Uh, again, you can give me a call about that. I can go into more detail with it. So now that I've told the analyzer what I've done, right, I've told it I'm putting 1.4 grams in hole number one. I've physically done that on my wheel. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. At this point, it's just a repeat of the same process from, run, uh, from the beginning of run one. You do a FOD check, make sure you're clear and, and, and safe to start your aircraft. Begin, uh, turn the, air, the, the engine on. I usually wait till I'm up to full speed. Sounds about right. And I'm going to press OK to start the balance. Again, there's our desired RPM, our current RPM. We're pretty close still and our current vibrating. If you notice here, it went down a little bit. Uh, that's fine. You may see with your test weight, you may see your vibe levels go up a little bit. That's normal. That's okay. It's a test weight. It's a known amount of weight at a known location to induce a measurable change. Uh, this will not be a final solution on this one. So at this point, I'm happy with what I've got now. I'm going to press okay and move into my data acquisition. And top portion of the screen here, you're going to see your current. This is going to be real time. What you're going to see, you're going to have your RPM, you're going to have a current vibe reading, and you're going to see your current phase angle. Down this portion here is your average. So now it's averaging out some uh, potentially erroneous, dat erroneous data, something along the lines of uh, uh, you know, the aircraft bouncing around a little bit, uh, wind gusts, uh, somebody squirming in the, the co-pilot squirming in the seat next to you, whatever the case may be. Uh, you'll see that start averaging out. When you see this error here, don't always expect that to go down to zero, especially if you're using low magnitude vibrations. So if you're already down pretty low, you know, to the, like the 0.05 or, or, or uh, lower, or 0.07 or lower, you may not see this get to zero. And that's okay, because at that point, the, the magnitude of the vibration is so minute that the sensor, it's, it's hard to distinguish between the aircraft moving uh, or something else uh, bouncing around, okay? Uh, so the analyzer's done processing the, the data, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And it's going to bring me to my review job screen. If you notice now, it says run two. Yeah, still, uh, still have my information from run one that's displayed. Same thing if I go to my polar view. You can see the move. So my, the circle was my first run, the square is my current run. And there's a little line in there that shows the effective change. That's the move that I moved. I now have my run to data displayed as well on this view here. Press the F4 key to go back. 
Uh, again, if there's something on the screen that I don't like or I, I'm just not familiar, uh, comfortable with the data, I can always dump the run to data and retake that at any time. Okay, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to press OK. Tells me to shut down the engine per manual instructions. Killed power. Let her slow down. And now instead of pressing OK, I'm going to press the F5 key uh, to continue. So now we're looking at an actual solution at this point. All right, so now it's, it's asking me for 3 grams at 28 degrees. Right? If I come down here, it's saying I want to split out 0.3 grams uh, at hole number 2 and 2.7 grams at hole number 3. Most of the time, this is going to be pre-populated for you with, with, with the suggestion, but I always want to make sure to tell you that you, uh, whatever you can put on there, that's what you need to put in the, the analyzer. So whatever you put on the aircraft, tell the analyzer the same. You may not be able to get the exact number that the analyzer is asking for. Get as close as you can and then tell the analyzer what you did. I can't get 0.3, but I can get 0.5. I can't get 2.7, but I can get 2.8. So that's what I'm going to tell the analyzer. Key thing here to remember, remove old weights and install and enter the new weights. So I'm going to have to pull my test weight off, right? So whatever weight I installed previously, that weight is now coming off and going away. All right, so hole number two. My reflective tape is right here. That's hole number one. Here's hole number two. I'm going to install my uh, 0.5 gram weight. And again, the reason these numbers are really low is because this is just a piece of plexiglass. All right, so I'm going to install my 0.5 gram weight to hole number two. Again, reflective tape here, uh, hole number one, hole number two. I'm going to tell the analyzer that I installed my 0.5 uh, gram weight there. And hole number two, and now I'm going to install my 2.8 weight on hole number three. Okay, I'm going to tell the analyzer that I installed 2.8 grams on hole number three. What it suggested was 3 grams at 28 degrees. I was able to get 3.3 .3 at 28, so that's fairly close. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Ready to start my checks again. Contact. You can already hear, uh, you, you may be able to hear the difference right off the bat uh, between a balanced system and an unbalanced system. Uh, but I'm up to speed, I'm going to hit OK. So there's my desired RPM, my current RPM, uh, and my difference still still comfortable there. And you, now you can see my current vibe reading. I'm now down to 0 0.03, 0 0.02, I'm very, very low magnitude uh, vibration. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Acquire the data. And it may take just a little bit longer when there's a low amplitude of vibration because, again, it's, it's having a harder time factoring out the error because the, the amplitude is so low uh, for the vibe uh, vibrating. So I'm good to go, I'm gonna press OK. And see, one thing we didn't mention was you see here when you're outside of your 0 .07 uh, limit, was what we've hard coded the analyzer to set, uh, call an acceptable vibe reading as 0 .07 inches per second. Uh, once I'm below my, at or below my 0 .07, that uh, magnitude number changes over to green. To let you know that hey you've you've uh, you're good to go you're in uh, in balance uh, so I can look at my polar chart view now and see uh, my effective change so I began out here at the zero let's see if I can get my little screwdriver pointer here uh, I started out here about 270 degrees uh, at about 0.34 made it a measurable change with a test weight and then I uh, installed my actual solution and that brought me down to my 0.02, okay? So now I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna shut down engines. And 
and slow down. All right, pressing F5 uh, to continue. So at this point now, because we're at 0 0.07 or below, and we're currently at, at sitting at 0 0.02, you're going to come up to a screen that says a vibration summary page. Uh, it's going to give you an indication saying your vibration level was good, so anything 0 0.07 or lower is going to be considered good. Uh, it gives you your starting vibration. Uh, you're on run number one, you were at 0 0.34 at 270 degrees. And we finished with our current, our last run was 0 0.02 at 98 degrees. Uh, so it shifted just a little bit. Because uh, usually when you have uh, holes yes selected, uh, you're installing your, your weights in the permanent locations anyway. Uh, so at that point, if that's the case for you, uh, you will use your left and right arrow keys. And uh, Jared, you may need to swap out to the wide view. All right, good to go. Uh, you can make your selection here to completed. All right, and so once if your weights are in the permanent location, you're good to go. We can just say completed and done. Uh, if you're not and you uh, uh, are wanting to use the weight calculator or do a, a verification run, you can say do verification run. Cursor down here to this selection here. That just lets the analyzer know that you're, you've made your, your choice and uh, you're happy with it. Uh, you can either hit, OK, hit the F5 continue button to uh, say that that's what you're, you're wanting to do. You want to do a verification run. Uh, you can press the F3 weight calculator. Uh, that's mainly for the guys that, that have the holes no option selected to where the analog, you're using the, the spinner retaining screws uh, for your, your test weights uh, or your, your first initial solutions. Uh, and if we've got time, uh, how are we doing on time? 25. 25, okay, yeah, we're good. So we'll talk about the, the weight calculator here in just a moment. Uh, with this low of, uh, magnitude of vibration, if I, if I move down here on this second ring, uh, it may cause it to the vibe level to go up just a little bit, but I'll show you the, the weight calculator and give you an idea how that goes. So if I'm going to do that, if I want to select my weight calculator, I'm going to press F3 here for weight calculator. It's going to carry over the solution weight, which was 3.29 grams at the phase angle of uh, 27.74 uh, degrees. At this point, it's going to ask me for a couple, uh, some, a little bit of information. You got to tell it what the spinner diameter is. All right, so whether you measure that in millimeters or inches, either one, just tell the analyzer and stay consistent with that. So tell it what the, the, the diameter is of your spinner. Uh, for this one, uh, it's really, really small, so it's seven inches. And then the offset, uh, can we go wide again, uh, Jarrett? The offset is if this was my spinner retention screws, and this is where I'm moving the permanent weight location is to I'm going to drill a hole in the bulkhead and, and install my, my permanent weight here. What's the offset from this radius to this radius? What's my difference? In this case, we're about an inch. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm a one inch there. Um, now it's going to uh, ask me for do I want to split the angle. Again, this is uh, considering that you're using the holes no option that you're going to have to drill. So at that point, you're limited to two locations. So if, if I can get all my weight in on one hole uh, or in one application, I don't exceed my max allowable for a, a single uh, screw hole or a single weight application, then I can just say split angle no. And it'll go right in and say, all right, well, at that phase angle, uh, put this amount of weight. Uh, for my instance, I can probably split that across two spots. Let's just see what happens here. Uh, so I'm going to say yes, split the weight. Uh, and so now it's saying... It wants it at 27, so what other two angles do I have available? Let me get my protractor back up here and installed. My reflective tape is right here because I'm relative to tape, and there's my hole number one. Uh, it's wanting it at 27 degrees, uh, so 15, 20, 25, right in between here, the, the, the 25 and 30. Um, I've got one at 23. And I've got uh, 23 and 37. So I'm going to tell it 23 and 37. Press OK. And there's my permanent weight placement of what it's wanting me to do. It wants me to put 3.06 uh, gr grams at 23 degrees and 1.57 at 37 degrees. At that point, I would go in and make my adjustment um, and then press the F5 continue key and move right into the verification run uh, and, and just do a verification check on how that, uh, how that worked, okay? Uh, 
but for our instance today, I don't have uh, this this inner ring, this thing being so small. It'd be interesting to, to play with that, but we won't do that today. So I'm going to say completed, uh, that I'm happy with that .02. This is the permanent weight uh, locations for here, so I'm going to move down uh, to cursor here after selection. Uh, at this point, you don't hit OK. You hit F1 quit job. When you hit quit job uh, on a propeller balance, what that's going to do is let the analyzer know that you're happy with what you've done or you're done with this job and you're not going to resume it again. So you're finished. Um, you hit quit job. It's going to throw up a screen that says, hey, you're about to terminate this balance job. Are you sure you want to quit? You're, if you say yes, you won't be able to resume it later. Uh, let's say um, I'm going to say, no, I don't want to quit this job right now. Uh, something come up. Uh, you know, I was in the middle of run two. I couldn't complete the job. Uh, you know, lunch happened or the, uh, I don't know, started raining, whatever the case may be. If I hit the home key, uh, and go ahead and power everything down, I can come back later on after lunch or whenever the, uh, the weather is, is better and more suitable for balancing. I can hit propeller balance, and now you get the resume job option. Okay, so that means there was an incomplete job. You didn't finish that job. So I can hit OK there, and it's going to generate that list. This is where I was mentioning that you, on that customer name field uh, when we started the job that you want to put something in there is if you don't enter anything in that customer name field, this will just say unnamed. And then all you'll have to go by is a date code off to the side to figure out if that was the job that you uh, wanted to resume or review data on or whatever the case, uh, case is. So I want to restart, uh, resume, job number, uh, uh, name sim, and it brings me right back to where uh, I left off. So I can pick right up where I left off uh, on the, uh, before I shut down. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit quit job, call it done, uh, about to terminate this balance job. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes, I do. So I'm going to press that. And now I can go in and manage jobs, review that data, and that's going to be for uh, next week on Tuesday. We'll talk about managing jobs and what the setup, changing the setup does or ending a job does to the setup. I'll go into the to the setup and show you how it adjusted the ICFs, the influence coefficients, um, and uh, we can go from there. Now, I will say, I will do, let's do this real quick. I'm going to pull these weights uh, back off. We have done a successful balance job on this engine prop combination, right? So the analyzer has now learned. It learned uh, what kind of weight is required to affect a change uh, on this engine prop combination. Uh, and that has changed and saved in the setup. And we'll go into detail about that on Tuesday, about what actually changed. But I want to show you the, the advantage to having a learning system and maintaining these setups, um, not tail number specific, but engine prop combination specific so that you can maintain a fleet. So I'm going to go ahead and start a job again. Press OK, start the job. I'm going to use that same uh, setup again because it's the same configuration. It's the same engine prop combination. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, I'm going to come in here to this customer. And because I've already got a customer name in there from what I've previously completed, I'm going to say, yep, I'm going to reuse that one. But I'm going to change it up a little bit and just say that's SIM, um, SIM A. All right. Hit OK. Same thing here, engine information. Go ahead and fill that out as needed. Because all of that information, everything that you fill out on these two screens will show up on your report uh, later on when you print that out. So I'm going to press OK. Preparing to take uh, data. So we've got our TAC channel plugged into TAC channel 1. Uh, we've got our vibration cable plugged into uh, VIBE channel A. Our TAC power is on right now, so I'm checking the alignment of the photo TAC. Everything is still good. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I'm going to start the aircraft up. Give it a second to come up to speed. Press OK. There's our desired RPM, 1728. A little bit slower uh, right now. It's down to about 1720, and it's OK. And then our current vibe, press OK. It's acquiring the data. All right, good to go. Press OK. There's our vibe reading, 
current vibe reading. Uh, I'm happy with that. Don't need to change it, don't need to retake it. Press OK. Gonna shut down engines. Wait for our prop to slow down. Press F5, continue. I don't have any existing weights here. Again, if you want more information on this, please give me a call. And we can talk about this uh, until you're blue in the face. So now it's coming back. It learned, right? If you remember on the previous uh, setup, it wanted um, about three grams at the 30 degree location. So in this case here, it's saying put zero in hole two. And in hole three, it wants 2.9. Let's see, let's go ahead and throw in uh, the 2.8 in hole number two. Let me find my reflective tape where my hole zero is, or hole number one is. So there's my reflective tape. Here's hole number one. Here's hole number two. Uh, so I'm going to go to hole number three and put 2.8 grams. I have to excuse me here. My, I haven't been in the field in a while. Uh, so my dexterity is lacking. Two point eight grams on there. I'm going to tell the analyzer that that's what I did. Two point eight. Come down, and then press OK. Start the aircraft back up. Press OK. And now we've just saved us a run. Instead of doing uh, three to four runs, we're doing two to three runs, and we're within balance. Press OK, and we're good to go. All right. So that's the advantage of, of having your setups uh, configured for uh, engine prop combinations instead of just doing them for every individual tail that you have. As long as your engine and your prop combination are similar, uh, just reuse that setup and you'll end up saving you a run um, every, you know, as you go out. So instead of doing you know, three to four runs uh, to get your prop in balance, uh, you'll be looking at two to three runs uh, to get it in balance. Okay, I'm gonna press okay there, I'm happy with it. And now we're good to go. All right. I'm gonna tell the analyzer that I'm completed, I'm happy with that. Cursor down here, and then now Quit job. Yep, I understand that I'm uh, going to quit. Uh, so what some of the things you may see is if you start running into problems, uh, if you start chasing your tail to where your phase angle is jumping quite a bit to where it's asking you to put weight here and then it's asking weight to put uh, over here and then down here and you just, you're jumping around from run to run, uh, that's a, usually an indication that there's something else mechanically wrong. There's something else going on. It's either uh, process failure uh, that, that you're installing the, the weight in the wrong location or uh, there's something mechanically wrong with the prop engine uh, combination. Uh, you can also check for looseness of the vibration sensor, uh, make sure it's torqued down properly, uh, make sure you're getting a good tax signal, uh, tax source, um, and watch your phase angles on that data acquisition screen to see if the, the average is jumping around uh, quite a bit. Uh, and if, if that's the case and you, you go, you know, four, five, uh, six runs and, and you see very little difference. When you get to the, you get to the fourth uh, run, fourth or fifth run, and you don't see any improvement in your vibration level, stop. Uh, stop wasting gas. Uh, uh, stop and take a look at what's going on. Check your procedure. Check your installation. Uh, and then uh, make sure you do a, you know, first and foremost, you do a really good inspection on the prop uh, before you even begin the job. But just uh, take a look at uh, uh, some things uh, on the prop. Uh, sometimes, you know, some of the things that we've seen in the past is, you know, accumulated grease inside the spinner. Uh, you know, see, uh, sometimes you'll have a, a blade or a, a prop that's not seated properly or, or the, um, the prop shaft is, is bent or something. You have a, a run out uh, issue there, so you, you'll end up chasing your tail if there's something mechanical uh, going wrong. And if uh, you're at the run four, five, six, seven, and you say quit job, it's going to come up and throw an option and say, hey, do you really want to save the influence coefficients or save the, the, what we learned from this balance job in the setup? And usually I say no on that case. And you don't want to, to uh, contaminate or corrupt that data. And then on, on Tuesday, we'll talk more about 
uh, what to do if that happens. Uh, if, if someone accidentally says yes and saves that bad data, um, how to, how to get, eliminate that, how to reset it. All right, so, uh, yep, I'm good. I know that I'm gonna, I want to quit, and I'm finished there. Okay? Um, so that's a, that's a basic balance job from start to finish with the, um, uh, the Cobra II. I'm going to turn it back over here to Scott um, in just a second here. Uh, just a second. Uh, for Scott's uh, final thoughts of Scott. Hey, again, I hope everybody had learned something today. Josh is very knowledgeable. Again, ACES system being around for like 40 something years in this industry uh, provides a lot of uh, technological uh, advantages. Again, um, those that are interested that are existing 2020 users, existing ACES equipment users, please contact us. You know, again, if you're interested in upgrading to the Cobra 2. Uh, also, if you're not, if it's something, if you're interested in just looking at a new system, you know, again, contact us. Uh, you have, uh, if you'll see on the website, uh, you got us uh, for sales. You got sales at acesystems.com. And again, if you have more questions regarding this uh, presentation and technical questions, uh, you can get a hold of Josh or, or Todd at the uh, support at acesystems.com as well. Again, appreciate you all very much uh, for joining. Uh, again, please contact us.